Um, the iPad case. Let me finish off the episode here with this iPad case. And this is, it's pretty thin. I was amazed how thin it is, the Apple case. They're apparently hard to come by. Or I ordered mine very early though, so I got it. Um, it's pretty simple to go in. Basically you, let me go ahead and just turn this off. Oh, by the way, it works, oop, I caught my microphone there. Uh, it works the same as, you know, you have a little button up here to close on the uh, iPad, just like you do on the iPod Touch. Oh, by the way, I want to compare before I do this to the size of other things. You know, here's my size comparison. If you wanted to see the size comparison of this to, say, an iPod Touch or an iPhone, there's the size comparison that you're getting right there. So this is really um, quite a bit of screen real estate. If I go to screen real estate, you know, right there would be the edge would be a little more accurate because there is a dark black band here along the sides. Um, you can see that very well. Yeah, there we go. You can see that the black band's a little bit off. Now, the weight of it, um, it's about the weight of, what, three notepads that are about this size. Um, in fact, if I was to hold up a piece of paper here for you to show you the size of this, you can get an idea for how it is in comparison to a piece of paper, if I can hold on to it. There you go. There's the piece of paper. Alrighty, hopefully you can see that. So it's a little smaller than a piece of paper. So it's a little smaller than what you might have thought. Um, and I also want to compare it to, say, the Kindle, which people have talked about. And here's the Kindle. And um, the Kindle, this is the standard Kindle with the $250 one that everybody keeps comparing it to and saying, oh, it's cheaper. But you'll notice the screen is a lot smaller on the Kindle. Um, if I get a good reflection here, you can kind of see the screen. I mean, this whole thing fit, fits within on this device within the screen on the iPad Touch. So the full size of a small Kindle is actually the size of the whole screen on the iPad Touch. So this really doesn't give you as much space to be able to read what you want to do. Um, it's also a bit thicker than what you get with the iPod, than the iPad, okay? I say iPod Touch. Please forgive me. I'm still trying to get used to this word iPad. Don't know why they picked that, but anyway, a little bit of comparison there. Let me move this out of the way. So the case is kind of nice, and uh, you basically pop it in here, and if you can see on the case, there's a couple things about it. There's a little slot down here for you to be able to connect to the bottom of the iPad. There's also a place here, little holes, if you can make that out. There's holes for the speaker to, uh, sounds to come out. Anyway, so you want to make sure you get it in the right way. There's my speaker at the bottom, and so I want to put it in this way. So I lift up the flap. This out of the way. So lift up the flap and I slide this in. I really recommend the case. It's going to make a world of difference as to how much you like the iPod, this iPad. So you slide this all the way in. By the way, it's a little hard to get in, and uh, once you do get it in, it is even harder to get out. <laughs> So there's not much chance of it slipping out, and you really don't want to do it. But even though there's very little chance of it slipping out, they do give you a little flap here to fold down under uh, to make sure it stays in place. So you just kind of slide this underneath. It just kind of double make sure that it stays where it's supposed to stay. There we go. Now, this is nice because, one, it gives you a little more protection on this device if you were to, to drop it. It has a little bit of a, a cushion along the edges, this stuff. If you can see how this stands out very well. It kind of boing, 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 kind of gives you a little more uh, protection if you were to boing it on the end. You can see you still have access to your screen lock, your volume buttons, down here for the uh, connections, uh, the speaker holes right there. Got that good. Here you see the speaker, and up at the top where you have a place for your headphones and your, your uh, microphone. That's your microphone port right there. And there's your little clicker to turn it on or to power it off. Now, the reason this is so great is because you can use it as a stand to prop it up. It gets a little old at a pound and a half holding it in your hands for a long period of time. And particularly if you were to say, I don't know, take this to a fast food restaurant to be able to watch a podcast, say, I don't know, Ask the Techies, and you wanted to eat, you know, and you're grabbing your hamburger, you can't hold the device and laying it flat is not a very great way to be able to see the, any show. So the stand is great. On the back, you'll see that there is a little flap right here. And what you do is you put this, you fold this back, and you stick this, pull that out, and you stick that down in there, like so. Got a good shot of that? Good. So now, 
I can lay it like so. And now it props up so that I can take a look at it. I can also prop it up this way for me to be able to watch. You can see it's fairly stable. I mean, I'm being kind of rough with it here, and it's, it's I'm having a hard time getting it to tip over. See, I'm getting it to wobble. Well, that time it did tip over. That was pretty rough with it, though. Um, so that way you get a nice little stand. Also, if you wanted it in the other mode, it pops up that way. See around the back how this all fits together, it holds it together. So the stand just makes it a much nicer experience. Plus, I'll give you another reason. It has a harder time slipping out of my hands because it's got this grip. It's not slipping out of my hands. There we go. This gives you a better grip to be able to hold on to it. It's a great surface. Um, don't know if there's a, if you can get a good idea as to just how this stuff feels, but it's this sort of satiny type of item that just makes it really easy to grip. I find it's a lot safer. I'm probably not going to drop it. And if I did, all this extra little padding around the edges is going to cushion everything and protect it anyway, I do believe. So the case, I do highly recommend, is about 39 bucks, but I think it can make a world of difference. It doesn't take up much space at all. You can see how much th thin it still is, so it isn't adding a whole lot of padding, but it's given enough to grip it and to protect the screen from scratches, items like that, you know, uh, and a little bit of cushion. It's pretty sturdy, so it's not like it's going to break very easily anyway, um, but I do recommend the case. Okay, coming up, I'm going to have some uh, additional reviews uh, on the iPad. I'm going to be covering uh, iBooks. It's one of the things I'm going to be covering. How good is iBooks and other book applications that you can get on the iPad? What is the reading experience like? And what can you do in those programs as far as annotating, making bookmarks, that sort of thing with the books? Also going to cover the Mail and Safari applications. What can you do? What can you not do? For instance, can you do Google Docs? Hmm, you have to watch the video, I'll tell you. Uh, I'm going to also do a video on... I'm trying to think of all the things. Wait a minute, I've got to run over here in the paper. Oh, on the videos and music, those features are going to be doing photos and maps. Also, text. How can you get text into the device? Going to be talking about that, including some speech recognition, some neat things like that. So do be sure to check back for more of Ask the Techies reviews on the iPad.